Hello. Before I start diving into the front forts of the Molten, I'd just like to thank everybody so far for watching and for any comments and for subscribing. I would also like to thank the viewer that pointed out to me something that I really should have mentioned in the last video. Um, quite rightly, he pointed out that I didn't mention something that perhaps I should have mentioned. So I'll zoom in and show you. The rubber block, um, basically there's a piece of metal that attaches to that that is then riveted to the rear fork. This had already split before I started to remove the swinging arm, the rear fork. Um, if it hadn't, then obviously I should have uh, removed these screws. One at either side there and one underneath here. Um, if you don't remove those screws and your rubber block is still laminated, still together, as soon as you start trying to remove the rear fork, you will twist it off. If you twist off the metal, it's not so bad. You can clean up all the rust, because there will be some on the rubber and on the metal itself, and glue them back together. You know, it's decent, flexible bonding agent. Um, if you rip the rubber, those, I would imagine, would be very difficult to get. So just a, a bit of a word of uh, word of advice there if you're going to try and do the same as me. If you spot anything um, that needs constructive criticism, I'm quite happy to receive constructive criticism. We all learn together. Thank you. Not sure if you can hear that, but uh, those bearings, bearings are very dry, very gritty. These forks will come off the traditional way. Yeah, someone's definitely been in this before. Because that's very, very loose. Gums. Well, that part was a lot easier than I thought. Ah, oh, the bearings are dirty little specimens, covered in congealed rust and old hardened grease. I've removed them from the frame, from the fork, you can probably see that's a bit, uh, a bit filthy. Hopefully it'll clean up, otherwise I'm going to have fun looking for another one. Otherwise the cup's in the frame, very rusty, can't really see up there. Someone's definitely been in it before though. So my next job will be to remove the caliper. And there's also, you can see, a tube in there that supports, well, supports a great deal of the suspension basically. The main spring is up there. Um, yeah, never noticed that before, that's uh, been off at some point as well. Hmm. I shall investigate. Right, the front caliper's off. Ready to go in the box of bits. And if I lift up this uh, boot, you should be able to see the splines there that keep the fork pointing the same way as the steerer tube. Now, there is, if you can see it, an aluminium tube in there. I need to drift out while preventing the spring coming out and getting me in the eye. So what I'm going to do is refer to the good old internet for the best practice for that. I don't want to uh, cause any damage or uh, get a spring in my eye. The spring is apparently a piece of rubber with a coil around it and that provides the damping and the spring keeps it in the right, right azimuth really and stops it binding from the uh, from the steerer tube. There also should be right up there, you won't be able to see it because it'll be too dark, but there's supposed to be a screw in there. Now I can't see it, so I think someone's been in this before and managed to remove that screw, which is supposedly one of the really difficult bits about this, uh, about rebuilding the forks. There's also there, that needs a C-spanner to remove it. Um, so there's a few bits and pieces 
I uh, probably need to put a little bit of penetrating oil here and there just to uh, yeah, make life easier for myself. Okay, I managed to get that pin out from there. Drifted out quite easily and as you can see it's managed to bond itself through rust to the fork which made it a little bit stiffer than it should be but came out quite easily. Unlike this next tube inside there. Not sure if you can see it that well but uh, there's a tube there that this went through and that's bonded in quite well. Right. Hmm. Yeah. A bit more penetrating oil I think. And a bit of a poke about with the screwdriver. Let's see if I can loosen that. Get rid of some of the dirt around the edge. I mentioned earlier that I didn't think there was a screw in here. Uh, but there is. Um, I've got a much more powerful light, but smaller, that I can fit close to my eye and have a peer down the hole. There is a posi drive screw right the way down there. Thankfully, I had the foresight to uh, <laughs> put a, quite a lot of uh, penetrating fluid down there. Um, so much so that it's actually loose. And like I said, I do suspect that someone's been inside this fort before. So, uh, yeah, just unscrew it and uh, yeah, see what happens next. Right, so that should there we go now that screws out sit myself up because it's a bit chilly and raining all week right next job is to try and remove I'm not sure if you can see it Try and remove that, that sleeve. Could be fun. Well, rain stopped play yesterday, so uh, it's also pretty rainy today. So, doing this in the garage. I left this to soak for overnight in um, penetrant oil. And after a bit of poking about with a screwdriver, managed to get it loose. As you see, got quite a bit of uh, rust going around there so that'll need polishing up although it does slip in and out quite easily at the moment just a case of breaking that uh, breaking the seal that the rust gives it also if I pull the uh, pull that down you'll see this collar here that was actually loose where are we see it a bit better now this collar here it was loose so I managed to uh, undo that and hopefully the rubber spring should fall out of here it's not done yet so uh, yeah it's stuck inside there I can just see the tail end of the rubber so I think what I might do is pump the forts up and down a couple of times on the ground see if I can get it at least part way out well, I had no joy there, so what I'm going to have to do is um, leave it again overnight, or at least a couple of hours, uh, with some penetrating fluid in there, and see if it uh, hopefully gets through. There's various different types that you can buy. I'm not uh, sponsored by these or anything, but uh, Seafoam Deep Creep, i found it works, despite the silly name, um, it works very well. It gets in between most rusty bolts and it certainly does help if you can get hold of this worth a try if you use uh, use this thing a lot it's not really advisable to get oil and normal sort of oil based greases on rubber in terms of the suspension components but uh, once this is out it's going to get a good clean anyway um, when it goes back apparently you can use molly slip grease um, which does not eat the rubber so fingers crossed everything in there is in good condition um, the spring surrounding the rubber is binding to the inside and that's what's causing it to uh, causing it to stick so hopefully 
with a bit of luck this is just forming a puddle at the bottom at the moment so hopefully it'll find its way through and uh, release the uh, stiction between the spring and the inner fork once that's done I can get the rest apart one thing after another always fun with anything old but uh, yeah. we'll get there I can actually poke the spring down a little bit poking about with my big screwdriver So these bottom parts of the coil are obviously not stuck, it's further up. Hmm. One of the websites that guide you through this process, and I will post a link later, um, they do recommend, if in this scenario, putting a long screw into the rubber and then pulling it out um, using the, the screw to pull the rubber spring out I might have to resort to that but hopefully not hopefully this will release but I'll, uh, I'll give it a couple of hours for that, uh, that penetrating oil to get through penetrating oil starting to uh, seep in now it's going past the uh, the first coils of the spring that I can just about see hopefully with it being a, a spiral it'll work its way down the spring and release its bond and its death grip to the inside of the fork and hopefully a little bit more soaking a little bit more poking a little bit more waiting um, should be able to uh, should be able to loosen it, free it from its little trap listen that crunch that's all the rust um, inside on the spring and on the inner tube in the, in the, of the tube probably explains why I wasn't getting much, um, much suspension on the front there I think whoever's been in it before mightn't have got this far because they might not have been able to get uh, to get this tube out because it uh, took a bit of doing. Had to poke about a bit. But that sort of pretensions the uh, the spring, the rubber spring in there. Although where it is now, it seems to be stuck to the point of not wanting to come this way, which will be its natural. Uh, it's natural escape route well perseverance is the key yeah I'll post a link to the website that uh, gives you some decent instructions on this the more uh, resources you have when you're trying to do this the better really it's, uh, fair amount of welly and it's not one to come hmm right it's starting to loosen now after a bit of wriggling trying not to bash my fingers on anything oh yeah okay come on uh, well the rubber is coming out without the spring deep joy oh well <laughs> that's the rubber bit, that's part of it hmm yeah I'll have to rig something up to pull that, bit of a bent up, bent coat hanger or something well I eventually got there unfortunately I had to resort to brute force in the end so uh, see on the end of that spring you 
can see how rusty it is as well look at the state of that so be with the light back a bit might be able to see better but that's uh, a bit trusty that's a pull and writhe at that just to get it loose um, on the other end of that which took a bit of getting out I had to poke it out with a very long screwdriver that is the retaining bolt the bolt that you need the long screwdriver for that sits about here the red screw uh, that sits about here goes into that and behind that that's at the other side of these should be something that looks a bit like a car valve spring that's the rebound spring uh, and that's completely AWOL um, absolutely out of leave that's, uh, that's not in here um, so yeah someone's definitely been in it before although how they got to that point and not replaced that I've managed to get this so rusted is, um, is beyond me oh well this spring isn't beyond hope um, I mean it's, it's stretched a little bit but from what I've been reading online, the rubber provides the actual damping um, and springing as, as a rising rate action. This just holds it in place and stops it from deforming too much. So I should be able to get that back in there, um, nip that off and flatten it. Um, they'll probably be on bending back really. Failing that, I'll have a look around and uh, see if I can find another spring, similar length, similar gauge. A similar amount of coils and that should uh, should do the job unless I find an actual molten one once those came out um, this just pulled pulled straight out you know of course the uh, once the collar is undone there's a little plastic bush inside there I'm not sure if you can see it turn it around a bit that's a little plastic bush that connects with these four castellations in here and on the other side of that are splines which of course sit here and stop it from twisting you know make sure everything's pointing in the right direction don't want your uh, forks pointing the opposite way to what you want to go um, on the top of there is another bush um, little, I need to pull that down. There's a little circlip there that's uh, apparently a pain to get out. Uh, do that at my leisure. Everything needs a good clean up first. And you look at all the rust and crud on the end of there. Let's bring it round. There uh, you can uh, can see it all on there. All from the uh, from the spring. It's just yeah. It's just all nasty, no wonder it didn't work properly. Um, yeah, it got a little bit of straightening out here and there to do and a little bit of cleaning up. But yeah, we'll get there. Thirsty work though, time for a pint. <laughs> 